The next section is on business licensing, and uh, if you go to the Small Business Administration, the SBA.gov, their website has some great links. If you just type in uh, business licenses by state, you'll find a, a resource to click on your state, and it has links on that page for getting your licensing started. But regardless of where you're at, uh, you obviously have to have professional business licenses. Your professional license from a massage therapy standpoint depends on where you live. Uh, some areas don't require it. Minnesota, for example, currently when this is being recorded, doesn't require that. Uh, in some parts of the country, just don't. But besides your professional licensing, you do have to have uh, your business licenses taken care of. That's going to be on a state and local level. So the links on SBA.gov will give you a state co a connection. And when you get start your licensing program for your state, it's going to often get that whole ball rolling. So automatically you can enroll for your city license at the same time. Uh, sometimes it doesn't do that. Your state, you'll have to actually go down to your city hall or call online or go on the website and start to fill that paperwork out. But the biggest thing is making sure you understand your zoning first. That's your research. You'll do that first and find out should you even have a your office at your home and those types of things. But you'll go through the process, you'll get that unique identification number the state will issue you, and that ball gets rolling from an employment standpoint, employees, all those pieces will fall into place uh, during that process. If you don't get your city license, as you get your state license, you're gonna have a problem when the city finds out that you're conducting business without a license there and they want that money. Uh, and, and some areas require additional taxes on top of what the state collects. I know in Washington State, uh, they collect your business and operations taxes and they give a piece of that to the cities. And some cities want even more. So, uh, for example, in our area, Olympia asks for additional tax money, whereas other cities just don't ask for any money at all and on top of that. Plus, from a county standpoint, they're going to want to make sure that you're registered with the county because the county wants to charge you property tax on stuff you already own. So if you have a refrigerator, for example, they're gonna to wanna to say you know, when you bought it, how much you paid for it, and they're gonna drop that value over time, but they still wanna charge you tax on your stuff. So uh, if you don't register for that and you're making sure that they're aware that you're in that area, you may have some problems uh, down the line. City licensing, you wanna make sure again, you go to your city hall, ask for a city clerk. Most cities uh, in today's day and age, you can take care of it online through the internet. Uh, but deal with zoning and that kind of thing. Ask, can I work out of my house? Are there any laws on that? If I want to do massage therapy, there are certain areas I have to put my business. You know, in the old days when they would have, you know, tattoo parlors and those kinds of things, they wanted massage parlors next to that. Well, we're a medical profession now. So you should not be categorized and placed with that kind of zoning. It should be medically based. And if not, feel free to challenge that. But you want to talk uh, to the planning departments and health departments and zoning departments, a building department. Just make sure you're taking care of your issues as you go through. And they may even want you to have a certificate of occupancy, which might say, well, you can have X many people in your office at the same time. But your city will take care of that as you go through the process. If you have sales of product and if you're in an area that has sales tax, you're also all the money you collect from that. So if you let's just use simple math, you have a sale of a dollar and there's a 10% sales tax, well, you'll owe a dime uh, out of that, that sale. 10, 10 cents is charged to the customer, and you have to give that money to your state. So make sure you're uh, dealing with you know, sales of products. If you have those, uh, most states don't charge a, a tax on top of services. So massage therapy, if you charge you know, $100, there's no tax on top of that for your, your client, especially from a standpoint of being a healthcare uh, field. So just do your research in your in your area and find out if there's any tax on your services that you're offering. Again, if you do find out that your city wants you to be classified, uh, again, next to tattoo parlors or even sadly porn shops, those kinds of things in the same block or something or in that same area, uh, obviously you don't want to be there. So you would ask for a zoning variance if that were the case and ask the city attorney dig into it, don't lay, don't lay down and say, okay, I give up, but make sure you challenge that because uh, I challenged it years ago in my city. I was one of the first therapists to challenge the law and they wanted to fingerprint me and do a background check. And I asked them, I said, do you do fingerprinting of, of doctors? And they said, well, no. I said, well, you can't do it to me. And so you can challenge that in some cities, they still have old laws in the books. So feel free to challenge that and ask to speak to the city attorney.
Next year, you'll want to work with the Internal Revenue Service and go online to the IRS, and you're going to want to apply for an EIN, so the Employer Identification Number. I don't care what kind of business you're in, if you do not get that number, they're going to want to use your Social Security number. And passing that around from a business standpoint is a bad idea, from a, everything from identity theft to a, just in general privacy. So get the identification number set up, and you're going to use that from a standpoint as, your, as an employer, and you use that in many areas of business. So your state gives you an identification number, but the federal government gives you one as well. So when you're, you're paying your IRS taxes, and you're you're collecting money from the standpoint uh, as an employer, that number comes into play. You can go through the IRS, it's called the Internet EIN Portal, just do a search for that on your website a search engine and you'll find uh, that portal fairly easily. But make sure you take care of that, get your EIN right up front as you're getting your licenses taken care of.